Hallelujah. 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 Shalom, everyone. Shalom. All right, all right. It's a pleasure to come and fellowship with you guys to be amongst the Kahal. Uh, just one more Sabbath day. Uh, we honor and uh, worship and come together to honor and worship the Most High. Yeah. 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 He alone is worthy to be praised. So we, we, we thank you guys for having us uh, come out. We're looking forward for, uh, to this fellowship yeah. and uh, hope uh, uh, we can be a blessing one to another. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Craig, Shalom, Shalom family, glad to be here and uh, worship and fellowship with all of you. All the saints. Hallelujah. This my great, this my great uncle Howard. Go ahead, Uncle Howard. I want to thank him for cutting up guys' long road. Put it the other way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He took a safe way, took a safe way here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say some things when we 
other day you want to say some things, no, you're not going to be okay because you said it. So you want to stand up and say some things. Um, you could be doing anything else. Let him use you. Let him use you. Got the five.
or sing. Mm -hmm. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man approved of the Allah among you by miracles and wonders and signs which Allah did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of the Allah ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom the Allah have raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be bound by it but thou we spake concerning him i foresaw yahuwah always before my face for he is on my right hand that i should not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch Dawi, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that the Allah had sworn with him an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Mashiach to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of the Mashiach, that his soul was not left in Hades, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Yeshua hath the Allah I am raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of the Allah I am exalted, and having received of Abba the promise of the Ruach HaKadosh, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. You might want to underline those terms there, see and hear. Right? Verse number 34, we're in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 34, but thou weed is not ascended into Shemaim, but he said unto him, Yahuwah said unto my Adonai, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Yasharal know assured that the Allah have made this same Yahshua whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now let's pay close attention to this. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Cephas and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So the topic of this discussion today is what must we do to be saved? What must we do to be saved? Now, it, 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 there's a lot of theories and philosophies about what salvation actually is. According to the divisions of believers that exist today, you can get a bunch of different opinions on what salvation is. It's a shame that we are so confused about such an important part of our walk. 
how are we saved? Why are we saved? What are we saved from? Is salvation some mystical, uh, 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 esoteric, spiritual thing that we cannot touch, taste, see, feel, or hear? That is the question that in most believers believe that. Salvation is something mystical. Salvation is something that I can't see. It's, it's something that I can't touch. I can't grasp. I can't communicate it. But sadly, as we will see today, that's just not the case. Before we get into the precepts, for by thy precepts, we get understanding. That not without we said in the book. By thy precepts, we get understanding. And so we're going to go and take a look at the precept of salvation, at the concept of being saved. And what we're going to find out is that, as is the case with most of the book, most of that which is written, it goes back to something that is concrete. It goes back to concrete concepts and principles. When we say con concrete, we mean things that you can touch, taste, see, feel, and hear. As opposed to things that is left up to interpretation. Like love. How, how do you love? What does that mean? Love means different things to different people. Depending upon the culture. What is salvation? What does that word mean? S-A-L-V-A-T in the English. I-O-N. What does that mean? And why is it that most Believers, in my experience, in my 30-some years in uh, 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 studying the Bible and religion, why is it that we find that folk cannot give us a definitive term of what salvation is? There are some that believe all you have to do is say some words and repeat after me and, 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 and believe this and you are saved forever and ever and ever doesn't matter what you do after that your uh, salvation is eternal there are some that believe in order to be saved i gotta go to the priest i gotta confess my sins i gotta say some hail mary's full of grace pray for our sinners now that thou about death some people believe they gotta do those things right in the, in the world of scholarship, we call it synergistic soteriology, which is salvation. Don't let the big words fool you. I'm going to try to break them down so that you would be able to take what you hear and be able to translate it and be able to communicate it to those who pretend that they have uh, whatever. They have all the DDs and... They know all the hermeneutics, the homiletics, eisegesis. Don't let that fool you. Soteriology means the study of salvation. If you look at your Bible in the, uh, the Greek and you look up the word salvation in the New Testament and you uh, pull out your strong concordance, you're going to find that it comes from the Greek word soteria. And in this particular case, it closely resembles the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word for salvation is Yahshua. <laughs> All throughout the Old Testament, when you see uh, uh, salvation mentioned, when you see being saved, that Hebrew name, what they're actually saying in the original tongue is Yahshua. Yahshua. Right? We know that he is the personification 
of salvation just happens to be. Right? So now, as I stated, what we wanted to do, we wanted to set the premise that you understand that when you're reading the Greek text, a lot of times, that you, with most times, what you're dealing with, you're dealing with concrete Hebrew concepts, principles, and precepts that are being translated into an abstract language. It's being convoluted. Given vague language so that they can apply to every and anybody in any situation. I'll be able to twist it and manipulate depending on the circumstances. The abstract. But Hebrew is based off of concrete concepts and principles. It's based on that which you can see, touch, taste, feel, and hear. And it has, with its cultural context, is dealing with a nomadic group of people. People that pitch, pitch tents, they, they, they raise animals and hunt animals for their food. And so a lot of times when you go into the etymology, which means word study, when you study the word, you'll actually, it's going to take you back to a concrete concept. The concrete concept of salvation, like I said, the, um, the Hebrew word for salvation is Yahshua. And I'm going to give you some synonyms here today. You guys can take notes here. Yeshua, coming from the Strong's 3444, is translated salvation. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. 48 times. Yes. Okay. So when your Bible translators translate the word, Yeshua, they translated it into several different synonyms. Right? Word, words uh, that pretty much have the same meaning. So it was translated as salvation, it's translated as help, and you will need to write this down because you're going to uh, need to remember this. Deliverance, help, Save and welfare, right? That's what the idea of salvation is. Sometimes when you look in your Bible and you see the word deliverance, that's the word Yeshua, or which comes from the root word Yasha, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when we look in the book and we see the word help, when we see the word help, when we see the word save, when we see the words uh, welfare or victory, it's dealing with salvation. It is a principle and a precept of salvation. Right? So now let's go and get the picture. Let's get a precept uh, for salvation. All doctrine must be based off of that which is written, that which is in the Tanakh, that which is in the Old Testament. Paul told us that when he said all, uh, well, actually, uh, the author of 2 Timothy, which most likely wasn't Paul, but uh, told us that all graphy is given by inspiration of the Allah and is profitable for doctrine. In other words, when you look up that word profitable in the Greek, it means to heap up. And so what Paul was saying is all doctrine must be compiled of Old Testament. This is the test. When we go to the book of Acts, I believe it's somewhere around the 17th chapter, it said the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians. Why? Because they didn't take Paul's word for it. They went and searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. So when you get doctrine, you have to match it up with that which is written 
in the Tanakh, mm -hmm. which which is the scriptures. There is nowhere anywhere in the Bible referring to scriptures outside of the Old Testament. Y'all ain't hearing me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. People like to call the New Testament scriptures, and I do it since I was in Christendom so long. You'll catch me slipping up sometime and say scriptures, but you cannot show me one time in this book where Yahshua or any of the Talmud being his apostles used the term for anything other than the Old Testament, that which is written in the law and in the prophets. That's what scripture is. Mm -hmm. And so for in order for us to understand this principle, this precept of salvation, we got to go back to the Old Testament. Come on. We got to go back to the beginning and get that which is concrete, that which we can touch, taste, feel, and see so that we can get an understanding. All right? We're going to go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 14. Now let's see what salvation looks like in the Old Testament. Let's see what Moses thought salvation was. Let's see if it's something spooky and spiritual that you can never experience. Or let's see if it's something that we interact with. Let's let's see that. Let's let the book talk. Right? Exodus chapter number 14. And I like to read, so let's get us some context. The key verses is going to be verses 10 through 14. Those are going to be our key verses. But just to give us some context here, I will um, read. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharab that they turn and encamp before Piharo, excuse me, Pihad Hira, between Migdal and the sea over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Yasharal, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness have shut them in. They're in a rough place. Let's go take advantage of these folks. You know how folk do when they see you in a rough place? Oh, yeah, now's my time to get them. Yeah. Thought they were so much and this and that. They think they the people, this and that and the other. Oh, yeah, look at them now. Caught between a rock and a hard place, come right? Come on, come on. Right? Okay. So now, verse number uh, four, we're in Exodus chapter number 14, verse number four. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host. And the Egyptians may know that I am Yahuwah. And they did so. So now we got the king, just so you guys are following us. They're in a rock in a hard place. And the king is saying, now let me go teach them a lesson. Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. Right? He hardened his heart, and the most high hardened some more for him, right? Mm -hmm. Verse number five. And it was told the king of Mizraim that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. They said, why have we done this? That we have let Yasharal go from serving us. 
right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's not happy to see you go. Mm -hmm. They don't want to see you delivered, mm -hmm. even if they threw you a party for you to go. Right? Mm -hmm. They threw the party. And afterward, after they saw the salvation, after they saw the Yeshua of the Most High, it changed their mind. Mm -hmm. Right? And he made ready his chariot, verse number six, and took his people with him. He took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Mizraim, captains over every one of them. Yahuwah hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Mizraim. He pursued after the children of Yasharal. The children of Yasharal went out with a high head. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Piha Hero before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, check this out. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Yasharal lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Yasharal cried out unto Yahuwah. Now imagine this. You are rejoicing because the Most High brought you out of captivity. He brought you out of a situation. That you thought you would never get out of. You couldn't see your way out of it. And he brought you out. But there's just something that won't let you go. Right? There is something there. There is some Pharaoh there that said, uh-uh. I know I said I supported this. I know I said I agreed with it. But I cannot watch this person be delivered. I cannot watch these people be delivered. Right? Now watch this. So they got in between a rock and a hard place and they cried out towards Yahuwah. They cried out for him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahuwah shall be Yasha, shall be saved, right? We called upon the name of the Lord. Now watch, let, let's see what type of salvation happened here, right? We all know the story. And they said unto Moshe, because there are no graves in Mizraim, have thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us? Carry us forth out of Mizraim. Right? Sometime when the Most High bring us out, we start looking at the captivity as if that was better than the deliverance. Because we're so used to being captive. We got a captive mentality. We got a lot of our brethren and sisters, quite frankly, that get incarcerated and they become institutionalized. They're so used to that system of captivity that they don't know how to function in freedom. Y'all not hearing me. Right? But we're going to see what salvation really is in this book, right? Verse number 12, is not this the word that we did tell thee in this Rahim saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Right? Moshe said unto the people, fear ye not. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Whoa, whoa. What salvation? Was they was, was they confessing with their mouth and believing in their heart? Or what, 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 what's going on here? This is one of the first.
first times we find the term salvation in the book. This is called a precept, and it's in Torah. Mm -hmm. First five books of Moses, certified precept. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's see what salvation is. Verse number 13, and Moshe said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation that Yahshua of Yahuwah, right? Which he will show, which he will show to you today. What? Did that say show? Demonstrate something that you can see? So there you go. Something that's concrete? Or are they just going to be saved in some spiritual world, some in their mind, they're saved, but they're still actually slaves in Egypt. Mm. Right? Right. Are we right. starting to see the, the, the concrete nature of salvation? Right? All right. Now he says, uh, once again, now watch that word see, show, no, look. You're going to see it. Salvation has physical manifestations to it. It should be something that you can see, that you experience. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right? And Moshe said unto the people, verse number 13, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahuwah, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today you shall not see them again no more forever now were these imaginary Egyptians or were these real soldiers with real uh, weapons and real horses and chariots your enemy is real your battle is real so you need a real salvation you need a real deliverance. Right? Verse number 14. Yahuwah shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So one aspect of salvation, and the aspect that the ancestors believed in was a physical deliverance from your enemy That's right. and you're going to see this thread all the way through the old straight through to the new testament right because there's some folks that say oh that's the old testament we're going to find this same thread going to thread itself all the way through uh, to the new testament to the great hadas the renewed covenant that's new covenant right right so it's something physical that they're looking for. It's something concrete. Salvation is concrete. Now remember, we talked about different types of salvations in the, the words, right? It can mean help, right? It can mean help, right? So we can have a salvation. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you guys the root word. The root meaning of salvation means the root thing uh, for salvation means rescue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the root word Yasha, Yeshua comes from the root word. All Hebrew words go back to three letter and two letter root words. Mm -hmm. And all words based off of those three letter and two letter root words have similar meanings to them. If I'm moving too fast, you guys can stop me. Okay. Um, so the root meaning of salvation is rescue concrete the image that you get is of a shepherd finding his sheep surrounded by wolves getting his staff and beating them off he saved them he rescued them Sometimes a sheep, especially pregnant ones, they, 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 they go over on their back and they're not able to get on their feet again because they're top heavy. And if they stay in that condition, they will die. 
And so the shepherd watches for them, especially the ones that are pregnant, so he can put them back over on their feet. He rescued them. That's the picture. That's the concrete image that that word salvation, at which comes from the root word Yeshua, meaning salvation, comes from the root word Yasha, meaning to rescue. My health was going down. Uh, uh, the elders came in and they prayed, and I was rescued. That's right. Is your salvation real? That's good. <laughs> because if you have a salvation that doesn't rescue you from your enemies, doesn't rescue you from your health problems, doesn't rescue you from your financial Hallelujah. problems, yeah. what are you saved from? Hallelujah. <laughs> Go That's ahead, right. brother. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. The curses are a judgment of sin. If we are walking in the way, you are supposed to be the head and wow. not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Or do we believe this word or no? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what the book say. Mm -hmm. Not just one time, more mm -hmm. than one time. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to get over to us today is to change our paradigm of what salvation is. Mm -hmm. We should be saved now. Mm -hmm. The Mashiach said, listen, there's nobody that's left father, mother, houses, and land that shall not receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. Is it not written? Mm -hmm. Not being blessed by giving your money away to some folks, some preacher man, some uh, 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 shyster somewhere. We get the blessings by following in the way. Hallelujah. That's it. We are saved, and the evidence of us being saved is somebody can watch your deliverance. Mm. Somebody can witness to your deliverance. There you go. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Been in church 30 years, 40 years, still fighting to pay the same bills, still fighting the same demons, the same devils, the same way, still working for the same folk that you've been, come on, man, that's not deliverance, that's called curse. That's right, that's right. The curse of the disobedient. That's right. Yahweh said, I've never seen the righteous for sin, nor his seed begging bread. Wow. Right, <laughs> salvation. <laughs> wow, the real salvation, not this spooky, mystical stuff that we've been hearing that I've been hearing for 30 years. Well, all you got to do is come and we'll praise and we'll worship, and you'll be set free. And I'm sitting and praying for the same people for the same problems over and over and over again. Where is your deliverance? When you hear the word deliverance, that's a synonym for what? Rescue. 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 Yeshua, salvation, which comes from Yasha, meaning rescue. Where's your rescue? Right? And so here in this text in our precept, we see that these people are seeing, they're looking at it. The Egyptians are seeing the salvation of the people of Yasharal. They're watching it. And so when the Most High brought them out, the Egyptians saw their deliverance. The children of Yasharal saw their salvation when they walked through on dry ground. That's right. And watch their enemies be drowned, never to be seen again. Y'all ain't hearing me. Wow. Wow. The the rock. Rock. <laughs> up in the sea. Mm. The horse and the rock. All of it. And the wheel. A concrete salvation. Concrete. Mm -hmm. 
This wasn't all yes. We are still saved. We are slaves and they are slaves. What are you saved from? Come on. Oh, wow, that's right. Where is the evidence of your salvation? The book says that the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the children of the Allah. Manifest salvation. Concrete salvation. I didn't write Exodus. I didn't write the book of Shemo. I, I, I didn't do that. I'm just reading what's there in the text. These are, the, the book is based on the words of Moshe. How did Moses view salvation? How did the children of Israel view salvation? Well, first and foremost, they viewed it. They saw it. They was looking for it. Not in the by and by in the sky when we all get to heaven, but now is the day of salvation. Is that not what you say? Yeah. 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 Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> give you guys another precept. Because you can't just have one witness. The book says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So we got witness number one. To the fact that salvation is something that is concrete. It is something that we can experience with our five senses. Right? It's not some mystical pie in the sky. Now we are waiting for... Jumping ahead of myself. Salvation is a process. You want to write this down. Salvation is a process. It has three parts to that process. <laughs> we are saved from the penalty of sin. Then we're saved from the practice of sin. And when Hamashiach returns, we're going to be saved from the presence of sin when he casts all these wicked folks into eternal damnation. Three parts to salvation. Three part process. We're first saved from the penalty of sin. Through confession and repentance, which I'm going to get into secondarily here. We get saved from the penalty of sin. Make sure you put past sins up there too. We are saved from our past sins, our Adamic nature, first. Then as we are filled with the Ruach and with the Word, and as we walk in the way, we deliver and are delivered from the practice of sin. Then lastly, we're waiting through hope in Hamashiach to soon be delivered from the very presence of sin, where the wicked is removed out of our way. There's a great example of this that I want to get into in Deuteronomy. But before that, let's get into the three, uh, did the three under the penalty. This is what you guys want to put for the penalty. 
Getting rid of the penalty starts with hearing the true gospel. The gospel most of us have heard is not actually the gospel at all. When you look up the gospel of Christ, and I'm not going to divert that, I'll get be another lesson for another day. But when you look at the gospel of Christ, the gospel of, of the kingdom, all of these gospels, you find a common thread in there. The gospel does not start with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Mashiach. That's a part of it. The gospel begins with the sin of man and the judgment of the Allah upon mankind. Mashiach told the Pharisees, repent, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Mm. That's the gospel message that he Wow. Teach. Judgment is coming upon all the wicked and all the unrighteousness of men. But there is a Yeshua. There is a Yasha. There is a way to escape. There is a rescue plan. But what do you need to repent for if you don't understand and you haven't heard the gospel that you have messed up, your ancestors have messed up, there's been folk that's been messing up between you and your That message is gone today. Jesus, he loves you. <laughs> Coming 
as a burning furnace and he's yeah. coming with fire and yeah. judgment to execute yeah. judgment. Yeah. Oh, I believe that. Uh, how do I, what do I, what must uh -huh. I do?
baptism in the Ruah. Different types of baptisms. It means to be immersed. So after we see our way, we see that we hear the gospel, we hear that judgment is coming, that we need to be saved from, physically saved from, literally saved from. Uh, we believe that message. We believe that message. That message causes us to confess, which pretty much is just saying what the Most High said. You was right and I'm wrong. Right? Baptism of repentance, which means to turn away. Not just confessing, Lord, I messed up, I did this, I did that. Means to turn away. Stop doing it and go in the way that you're supposed to go. All right. <laughs> All right. That's what we're we talking. just call it. <laughs>
this is the seal. Ezekiel tells us that I will put my spirit in them, right? And they shall be what with their spirit? Preach, speak in tongues, take people money, be what? <laughs> no, the spirit comes so that you can keep the command. Hallelujah. Ruah. Romans chapter number eight. Uh, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yeshua HaMashiach. Who do what? What's the sign of you being in it? That you walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruah, after the spirit. Right? So that's the first thing that we need is the baptism and indwelling of the spirit. You won't be able to do it without it. Then we have faith. You hear this word faith. I know you guys have been told that faith means to believe and to have uh, confidence in your mind. But actually the word faith as it is used in a Hebrew context means faith there's a difference one is a believing and the other one is what you do eventually yes. the track record that you show you are consistently walking in the way this is why james said faith without works is dead it's why okay. it exists show me a man to say yeah faith and, and and don't have no works how you gonna prove that you got your faith bro Mm -hmm. But watch me and I'm going to show you my faith and by God. my works. By how consistent I am in walking in the way. So this is what saves us from the practice of sin. The indwelling. The baptism of the Ruach. Mm -hmm. Right? And then our faithfulness to allow the Ruach to walk out that life, the life of Mashiach in us. I gave you Old Testament, Ezekiel, I think it's around 36 or 26, somewhere he said, I'm going to put my spirit in you so that you will keep my law. What did the Mashiach say? This is the New Testament. The New Testament, he said, and when he, the spirit of truth, is going to come, he's going to do what? Lead you and guide you into all the truth. All and he's going to bring back to whatever it's what? That which I spoke to you. Hallelujah. 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 All praise. Come on. In order for us to be saved from the practice of sin, we have to have that baptism in the end of it. And we have to be faithful. To the way to walking in the commandments with all of our heart, all of our soul, with all of our strength, and all of our might. Faith, the presence. How do you be saved from the presence? Now we have small battles during the war that we win, like David. Like the children of Yasharal, they were saved out of Egypt, out of Mizraim, saved out of there. Still ended up being uh, put in captivity by the Assyrians, 722 BC. Your salvation is guaranteed as long as you be obedient and remain obedient. That's why we say, we say, oh, I'm saved right now. Oh, you are? Really? <laughs> what kind of saved is that? What kind of salvation is that? We were saved from this situation. And so, yeah, we're saved people. But, yeah, we're still waiting on a salvation. We're still waiting on a judgment of our enemies, those that placed uh, uh, us into captivity. We're still waiting on those things. Uh. And that's a part of salvation. Luke chapter number one. 
Now I gave you the Old Testament precept. Let's go to Luke chapter number one real quick. Let me show you that the concept doesn't change in the New Testament. Basically, somebody when you stand in that Old Testament, we in that Old Testament, we have the New Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we want to start at verse number 64. Book of Luke, chapter number one. Mm -hmm. Verse number. This real salvation here. Right. This real salvation. I know exactly where you're going at. I was thinking that the whole time. And it reads as thus. Mm -hmm. Luke, chapter number one, verse number 64. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue was loose, and he spake and praised the Allahim, and fear mm -hmm. came on all that dwelt round about them. Uh -huh. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country mm -hmm. of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? The hand of God who I was upon him. Check this out. This is key right here. This, 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 this is going to let you know where this message that I'm getting ready to read to you about salvation is coming yeah, right, from. Exactly. Is it a man or, or what? And let's see. Uh, Luke chapter number one, verse number 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Ruach HaKadosh and prophesied, saying, So who's doing the speaking here? Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me after that start before you guys? No. Okay. Luke chapter number one, verse number 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying. This text here is telling us what we're about to hear is directly inspired by the Ruach HaKadosh, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. It's telling you that the Holy Ghost filled up John, I mean, I'm sorry, Zachariah, uh, uh, Yahukanan the Immersus father, John the Baptist father, it filled him up. And then it started saying something. Let's see what it said. Blessed be the Yahuwah Alahainu of Yasharal. For he has visited and redeemed Hallelujah. his people. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see that? Y'all yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Yahuwah Alahainu of the church. The Greco Roman church. That's what that said, right? Sir. 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 So this is the Ruach speaking. Is the Ruach racist here? Is 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 is, is, is he about? Uh, uh, is he a national identity person or what? Is he? Is he? Of course he is. Is, is, is this what the Ruach said? Of course he is. So you guys understand that this is the words coming from the Ruach. The Ruach says what? Blessed be the Yahuwah of Yahshua. For the whole world, right? Is it and redeem is for whoever believes in him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make this up. I just wanted you guys to see this in the book, right? Oh. Right? Uh -huh. And for he has visited and redeemed his people. Who is his people? Yashara. 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 Real wow. salvation. Wow. Real 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 salvation. Wow. 
salvation. Wow, brother. All right. All three. So now I'm showing you who this Seven. salvation is for. Only those that take hold to what? Yashara. That's, that's, right. that's, right. that's right. Because that's what it was meant for that's in right. the beginning. Totally right. Right. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. How many folk got saved during Noah's boat? Only those that listen to his message that believed him, which was eight souls, including right. him, seven other souls, his family that believed him. There's some tradition that some guy held on to the side of the boat in the Talmud or whatever what? that we know. Oh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I think it was supposed to have been Nimrod or something. Mm -hmm. Held him to the side of the road and he survived being in the wings or something like that. <laughs> but what is written, what we have in the book, <laughs> there was eight folk that was saved that was inside of the boat. And the whole world. Another picture of salvation. Oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I know. Right? Mm -hmm. A remnant. Of those that get in right. to Yashara. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let the Bible tell you that salvation is of the Yahudim. That's right. The Mashiach said, Listen, we don't even know what you worship. You can worship here, there, and there. It don't matter because you don't even know what you worship. But salvation. We know. Who we, we and what we worship. worship. Why? Because salvation, salvation is of Yahudim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. salvation because maybe I mixed up maybe I got something wrong right so let's see if the Ruach is going to agree with what I've been saying or let's see if he's going to say something different okay, okay. so you ain't finished. That, let's see right <clears throat> Luke chapter number one we had verse number 68 I gotta read that again mm -hmm. blessed be the Yahuwah Allah of Yashara for he had visited and redeemed his, his people, his people his mm -hmm. right and have raised up a horn of salvation for us where? In the house of his servant David. Nah, in the, in the, in the, in the Catholic Church. No. Uh, How about the Eastern Orthodox? Church? No. How about the Pentecostal Church? No. 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 <laughs> where where oh, is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Oh, and have raised up a horn of salvation for uh, us in the house uh, of his servant, uh, Dawi. Mm. Right. Verse spoke, number 70. Mm -hmm. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, mm -hmm. his holy Nebai, yes, yes, which yes. have been since the world began. began. Uh -huh. All right? So the world, since the world be, be, uh, began, what was the target of salvation? Who was the target? The children of Yasharel. Did I make that up or did we just read no, that? The right. children of Yashua. All right, I just wanted to make sure. All right. Verse number 71. Uh -huh. What is salvation? What did the Ruach say salvation meant to Israel? Rescue. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 71. That we should be Yasha from our enemies and, and from the, the hand of, of all that hate that's true salvation. Uh, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. So salvation is about the physical deliverance of Yasharal from the hand of our enemies. Y'all not hearing me. Oh, 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 oh. So if you're not a part of Yasharal, you have no part oh, in oh, salvation. Oh, oh. That's 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 that's
all these different denominations uh. and all this stuff. They're not saved. <laughs> and they call on the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't know. I just wow. Need to that to be this uh, boy. Let me uh let me say this. Can you start the stuff? No, I think that's a great question. That's a great question. Let me say this. I'm in no position to judge anyone's salvation and say who oh, is man. and who's oh, not. Boy. I just speak oh, and spit what the words oh, say. Oh, but this I can say. Um, matter of fact, Matthew chapter number seven, verse number twenty-three. That's, uh, uh, that's it. That's it. Yo, Matthew, right there. Uh, okay, oh, oh, up Matthew oh, chapter oh, number seven. Twenty-three. We're, we're gonna read. I need somebody to read it from that separate Bible. It's real good. Man. Matthew 27, what? Matthew, Matthew 7, 27, 7. Start at verse number 19. 27, 19. 27, 19. No, 7, 19. 7, 19. Oh, 7, 19. Oh, 7, 19. Every tree that bears not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can you say that again? Where are the folks that don't bring forth good fruit going to? He said, every tree that brings not forth
Like I said, salvation is a process. And sometimes he, he, he allow us to go through these other channels, through these other denominations and religions and stuff. You know, but you'll find that you always like stand out. You always yes. there's something that's different. And people uh -huh. just looking at you like he really don't fit in here, you know, and you'll get that. And so because and, 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 and it's gonna lead you to the truth. Mm -hmm. It's gonna lead you to the truth. It doesn't mean that we're gonna be perfect. I was, I, I don't, I'm not gonna to get to it today. But in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about when uh, Shaul, King Shaul, Malik Shaul, when Saul, uh, they was uh, the Philistines came and camped against them. Uh, 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 the the Nebaim, uh Shemuel, Samuel told him. The prophet Samuel told him, said, "Listen, bro, you gotta wait seven days, and then I'm gonna offer the sacrifice. Only the priest can offer sacrifice." So Saul, he gets he gets antsy. He see the people scattering like, man, it's taking too long. Man, I'm about to not have an army in a minute. Look at the Philistines gathering. Mm -hmm. Man, we can't be waiting on Samuel. And so he offered the sacrifice. Yep. He transgressed the covenant. That's right. That's right. He transgressed the, 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 the commandment of the Alahaya. But mm -hmm. guess what? The Most High still delivered his people. He didn't allow uh, Samuel, uh, uh, Shaul's uh, sin to, to, to cause Israel to suffer. What he did, he still, Jonathan and his crew of about a thousand, I think he only had like a thousand heads with him, went and said, man, let's run up to the camp of the Philistines. And as they went, uh, Jonathan preached the most high. He said, listen, we're going to show ourselves to these folks, mm -hmm. to our enemies. And if they tell us to come to them, that means that the Most High want us to destroy them. Uh -huh. He's giving them into our hands. <laughs> but if they say, wait right there, uh -uh, that means, uh, you know, we're going to have to <laughs> So when they got there, they, they, the Philistines told them, come on over, and they destroyed them. The Most High did it. There was an earthquake there, caused confusion. They swords start going against each other. The Philistines mm -hmm. killed each other. Mm -hmm. And they say that day Yashara was saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were saved. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of Shaul's sin, the Most High King uh, Saul mm -hmm. sin, the Most High still brought salvation to his people because it's not about us. We can't get so good. Oh, we, we are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Come Jacob. And so we're going to get in. Uh, everybody uh -huh. else. Nah, it's not because we were so great. It's because of his name. Come on, oh, his, his name. His and name. his oh, promise. Oh, 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 name oh, that was sealed in blood oh, with our oh, 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 From the beginning. So sometimes we struggle. Sometimes we, 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 we're in the wrong oh, place. Lord. Sometimes we've gotten oh, ourselves oh, in jail. But the bread oh, of the Most High has not been destroyed yeah. and will not be. That's oh, it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I I want to um, finish it up. I just want to recap and then I'm I'm done. I'm done. So recap wow. and then I'm done. You ready for me to finish this off, please? Yes, please. Okay. All right. He said, "But he that does the will of my Father, which is in Shemaim, many will say to me in that day, Watch this, Master, Master." Have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have we not preached in your name? Can anybody tell me what group of people preach in the name of Jesus? Is the Muslims? No. How about the Hare Krishna Buddhist people? No. They don't they don't do it either? Christian said the Hindus? Christian Islam. Somebody tell me what group of people prophesy, which means to preach. When you see the S Y instead of the C Y on the end, that means to preach. How many Pray people in preach the in the, the, the gospel oh. in the name of Jesus? Christian insanity. Christian insanity. Right? You will see some more fruit of that in here. What 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 to say next? And in and in your name have cast out devils. What group of people running around the planet casting out devils in Jesus' name? Catholics and charismatic Christians. Right? <laughs> Christian folk, right? Okay. And, what, and what else? And in your name done many wonderful works. Many wonderful works. We, we, we give food to the homeless. When the earthquake happened over there, we went and helped them over there. We making advances in sciences to, 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 to bring help to folks. We doing good works. So surely these folks gonna get in, right? Surely 
but I profess unto them, I never knew you. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. These folk are calling Jesus <laughs> Lord, right? He's my Lord and Savior. They're preaching in his name. They're casting out devils in his name. They're doing great philosophical works in his name. But yet, the Hashiach said, I don't know them. I never, I never even knew you. I never even met you. We never even had an acquaintance. What are you talking about? <laughs> he said, depart from me. What's going to be the, what, you, you asked, are they going to make it in? Are they going to be saved? He said, depart from me. No, come on in here. He um, said, depart from me. I came for everybody. I love you. He said, depart from me. No, everybody going to be saved. Depart from me. Oh, okay. You transgressors of the Torah. Now, why is he going to tell them to oh. depart after all your preaching, after all your devil casting out, after all your good works, if you ain't obedient to that which is written in Torah? You have no relationship with Hamashiach whatsoever, and your destiny is to be rejected. According uh -huh. to that word, because I didn't want nobody to say Sam said I wasn't saved when his first name saved. So I'll let the Mashiach uh, do the He talk. said, I ain't never known you. Yeah, I ain't know he said, I don't know you. Depart from me, you transgressions of the Torah. So that means if you're not obedient to what his Torah said, he don't know you. Uh -huh. oh. He don't know you. He don't know nothing about you. And you can't say you know him because you call on the name of Jesus, because that's not his name. That's the first thing. That was never his name. That was a name that was given. So that's not his name. But he said, I don't know you. And so in my closing, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I just wanted to make sure that you guys get these points. Um, um, and then you guys can ask questions if you guys have any more questions before um, we close this out. But we have the three stages. Hopefully you guys wrote that down. We have the three stages of salvation which is we're saved from the penalty of sin, mm -hmm. we're saved from the practice of sin, mm -hmm. and then we'll be saved from the presence of sin. Mm -hmm. In order to be saved from the penalty, so this would be the steps, uh, is to hear the gospel, is to believe the gospel, to confess uh, our transgressions, to repent from our transgressions, and to be obedient to the commandment, to be baptized for the remission of your sins. In order for us to be delivered from the practice of sin, we have to receive the Ruach. Mm -hmm. You have to be endowed with the, 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 the Ruach. Uh, that's the, the, the first. That's the power. Uh, 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 Paul Romans, <coughs> I think, is one. And 16, for I am not ashamed of the power of, uh, right. of the gospel mm -hmm. of Christ. What is the power of God unto what? Salvation. Oh, right? So... To everyone that believes it, mm -hmm. to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Uh, so we have the baptism of the uh, Ruach, and then we uh, have faithfulness. Remember, faith uh, generally means faithfulness. It's mm -hmm. not talking about a cognitive ascension or a cerebral uh, agreement to a certain fact. It's dealing with your faithfulness. It's uh, mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's the word pistis, which they translate as the Greek word pistis, which deals with faithfulness it's an actual consistency in uh what you do and not so much in what you believe and finally what we're hoping for and what we're keeping these commandments for and uh, uh dealing with the uh persecutions and stuff that folk will bring on you about the name of the mashiach is so that we will be delivered from our enemies right the salvation is of the yahoo being Right. Salvation is, is coming to the house of Yasharal, to the house of Israel. All those folks that are not in the house, you heard it before, but they told you it was the church, right? They told you it was the church. If you're not in the church, anybody that's not in the body of Christ is going to be lost. Ain't that what they told you? Uh, right. Well, yeah. So that body of Christ is called Yasharal, it's called Israel. Right, mm -hmm. and so anything that's outside of that body, it is no salvation is coming to Yasharal, and anything that takes hold of Yasharal will be uh, saved along with Yasharal. But salvation is of Yasharal, it's of Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your word. Uh, we thank you for your ruach in this place. Most uh, God, we ask that you would 
allow your word to find good ground in our heart that it would grow up and bring forth a uh, tenfold, fiftyfold, a hundredfold in the lives of your people. Father, help us to be able to take your word and walk it out in our lives. Father, 